Okay, the purpose of this video is to help you guys with some explanations on how to complete an individual tax return. Because I suspect for many of you, this will be uh, the first time you've done such a thing. And so a uh, little help never hurt. Okay, so what I have here is I've opened up page one of the Form 1040 because this is probably where I would start. And of course, you're going to have to determine the filing status of the taxpayer and check the appropriate box. <clears throat> You'll have to put a taxpayer's name, last name, social security number, to the extent they're married, the same. Uh, you'll have to determine if someone else is claiming the taxpayer is a dependent. Uh, that typically would not be the case when they're married filing jointly, but it can be the case. Uh, you'll have to determine whether or not um, the spouse is blind, these sorts of things, name address. Uh, our taxpayer has full year health care coverage, so you can certainly check that box. It doesn't matter if you check the uh, presidential election campaign. Then you'll fill in the dependents, right? So first name, last name, social security, relationship. And you'll need to establish whether that dependent qualifies for either the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents. Uh, so think of this as if you don't qualify for four, then you end up as a credit for other dependents. Okay. So uh, you should fill in the occupations to the extent you know those, of course, uh, the taxpayer signs here. And you don't need to worry about preparer's name, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let's get to the tax part. Okay. So the next thing I would do, because I, I think what tempts uh, new, new tax preparers is this idea of going line by line and trying to fill in every line. Oh, am I supposed to put something here? I don't know. Is something here? I don't know. Something here? I don't know. And before long, you get lost because there are so many darn lines. So instead, what I like to do is start with the source documents. So let's start with a W-2, right? So a W-2 is the primary form under which wages are reported to taxpayers. <clears throat> and here in box one is wages, tips, and other compensation. And box one is generally what goes right on line one. Wages, salaries, tips, etc. Boom. That amounts transfers right there. What else do we lift off of the W-2? Well, the Social Security information, we don't really do anything with unless uh, they have an excess Social Security credit. But uh, otherwise, we just worry about the federal income tax withheld, right? Because we know that represents a tax payment. So we want to make sure we get that tax payment down here under federal income taxes withheld. Okay, so the only other thing to worry about on the W-2 is generally items that might be reported in uh, line 12. And so these usually have a code. And the best way to figure out what that code is, is to go look at uh, the instructions for a W-2. And it will list all the codes for box 12. Um, so I believe I gave you a taxpayer with no state, but otherwise you would need to pick up state information down here. Primarily it would be the state income taxes paid because that would be an itemized deduction potentially. Okay, and that would really be it from the W-2. So if you watch the chapter 14 videos, you know that the second page of the 1040 is designed to pick up the most common items that you see, and a W-2 is definitely a common item, and so it's reported directly on the face. All right, our next source document is interest income, right? And so uh, here's a statement for interest income, a 1099 interest, and here's the interest income that would need to be reported. So we would go back to page two, and you can see 2A is tax-exempt interest, 2B is taxable interest. So Taxable interest goes on line 2B. If there is tax-exempt interest and there's a 1099 interest, it's often reported in box 8. And then the only other thing that you sometimes see is uh, federal income tax withheld. And so just like on a W-2, if there is some federal income tax withheld, you would report it on the same line as your other federal income tax withheld, right? And it even says, and 1099. So you would just add those two together and put them here. And that's pretty much it for interest. <clears throat> Here's a 1099 dividend. So a 1099 dividend is a little bit unique uh, because what happens is, unlike tax-exempt and taxable that are mutually exclusive, 
total and qualified are not mutually exclusive. In fact, whatever's in 1B is subsumed by 1A. So in this particular case, there's nothing reported in 1B. There are no qualified dividends. Qualified dividends, recall, are the kind that, are benef that benefit from preferential tax rates. So what we do is we take the items from 1A and 1B, and amazingly, we will report them a bit in reverse. You can see qualified dividends, which would be 1B, goes on 3A. <clears throat> Ordinary dividends, which is total dividends, from 1A goes on 3B. Okay, so this is total dividends over here and only the qualified part here. And you're going to see that that affects the calculation of tax. It doesn't affect taxable income because even a qualified dividend is taxable income. But note, you do not add those items together, right? They are reported separately. This is an informational item. So line 3A is an informational item. If there were IRAs, pensions, and annuities, there'd be a separate 1099-R, Social Security Benefits, 1099-SSA. Uh, I don't believe you have those. So that would get you all the way through line 5B. Total income says, well, add once through five, and then any amount from Schedule 1, line 22. So your next task would be to take a quick look at Schedule 1, lines 10 through 22. And you'd simply say, well, was there any of these income sources for my taxpayer? And probably the answer is no, but you would need to look, well, was there any business income? No, capital gains, these sorts of things. Look through. And if there aren't any, then there's no other forms of income. And you're effectively done through line six. Then you move on to line seven and it says adjusted gross income, right? If you have no adjustments, enter from line six. Otherwise, subtract schedule one, line 36. So you go back to schedule one and now you're in the bottom half and you'd have to examine your taxpayer information and determine are there any items within these that are reflected as a deduction, right? Are any of these items, do they jump out at you in the information? If so, you would report them here. They total right, add lines 23 through 35, so they total on line 36, and then that total's brought over and deducted here on line seven. Okay, then you really are pretty much home free from that point forward. So you determine standard deduction or itemized deduction, whether there's qualified business income, and again, to have that, you would need to have some form of business or flow through income. Do a little math to get to taxable income and then you go calculate your tax. And I am explicitly giving you permission to use the tax rate schedules. Those are the rate schedules for single, married, filing, joint, etc. You do not have to go to the tax tables. Uh, if you did, that, that'd be fine. Um, there'd be some slight rounding differences. But I'm permitting you to use the tax rate schedules. Uh, to the extent there were any other taxes on Schedule 2, you'd put them. Well, I didn't tell you to fill out a Schedule 2, so you know you're good there. Based on what you put on page 1, you know what item to put here on line 12A. I'm not asking you to do a Schedule 3, so you do a little subtotal. Not asking you to do a Schedule 4, so you do a little subtotal. Here's your withheld, and now you just true it up. Okay? So that's really all there is to this tax return. Uh, I did ask you to fill out a Schedule B. A Schedule B is required when uh, your interest or dividends is over 1500 I believe that's going to be the case uh, for all of you. So what you would do is report the items for, of interest here, and you would report the items of dividends here. Notice that there is nowhere to report tax-exempt interest here. This line carries over to 2B. It does not carry to 2A. Line 2A you pick up separately. Also notice there's nothing on here about qualified dividends. You only report total dividends on, uh, the, on Schedule B. Okay, then you would need to calculate the tax. And in order to calculate the tax, I've asked you guys to complete the Qualified Dividends and Capital Gain Tax Worksheet. And we've talked about in, again, in uh, how to calculate tax, uh, I showed you guys how preferential rates are, are um, applied 
and how you separate ordinary income and preferential rates. And that's what this schedule really does. So there's no real work done on this schedule. You simply pull items from elsewhere on that tax return or you just do math. So what that means is when it comes to the order in which you fill this out, you really do need to fill out lines one through five first, then six, then seven, then eight, nine, 10, and then you get to do line 11, right? So line 11 will come from your capital gains worksheet. If you look down here, it says tax on all taxable income, enter on line 11A, right? So uh, hopefully that's gonna help you get through the tax return. Uh, best of luck if this is new to you and have fun.